Welcome back to Speed Hack, hosted by Dave Dombro and Kevin Fallon here. We have a pretty interesting hack today, don't we, Kevin? For sure, Dave. But before we jump into it, I think it makes sense to back up for a second and review state-of-the-art in marathon racing shoes. There's been a paradigm shift in recent years in what makes a fast shoe for the marathon. For decades, a marathon racing flat meant just that, the thinnest, lowest to the ground midsole you could tolerate for 26.2 miles. Marathon training miles would typically be done wearing traditional shoes with higher midsoles, but come race day, competitors felt fastest in their minimally cushioned flats. Fast forward to 2017, Nike launches the Vaporfly 4% shoe. This product really challenged all convention in terms of what a marathon shoe should be. In one product launch, what a fast shoe looked like and felt like was completely changed. Here was a shoe with stack heights higher than many training shoes, with a carbon plate so stiff there's no forefoot flex at all. And then the claims of performance gains proved to be true. So almost overnight, the playing field completely changed. And what happened in the market, of course, is that everyone in the performance running space was forced to come up with a response. There have been efforts for most of the major brands to utilize high efficiency foams in combination with plates and clever constructions to offer the same benefits as the Nike shoe. And that's where we introduce this episode's shoe. The Hoka 1-1 Carbon X is a really nice execution of Nike's original idea. A lightweight, fast, and purpose-built marathon racer, the Carbon X utilizes a layer cake midsole construction with unique upper and lower foam components sandwiching a carbon plate. Hoka has a wide range of excellent and popular trail shoes, but so far we have not seen Hoka, nor any brand, translate this road-proven racing chassis to the trail. When we ran the shoe, we found it to be responsive underfoot and the rocker bottom really puts you on the forefoot. All quite familiar if you've tried the Nike Next% percent or 4%. The Hoka Carbon X has no rubber on the bottom, but the lower midsole seems to be an outsole grade material with abrasion resistance and traction built into the foam. It ran really well on the road and okay on smooth and level parts of the trail, but the flat bottom made traction dicey at times, both up and downhill on the single track. So the real question is, can this road racing demon be speed hacked to be just as fast on the trail as it is on the street? What you're describing is basically the equivalent of taking a pure road racing car okay. and hacking it to do the Paris Dakar rally. Yeah, that's pretty much right. Porsche had a pretty good success doing that with the 959. What's our plan? Well, we think there are three main areas to focus on for this speed hack. Traction, flex, and fit. All right, it should be no surprise that the flat-bottomed Hoka Carbon X was difficult on the wet trail. The lower midsole of the shoe being outsole grade means we can carve large lugs directly into it, adding the mechanical traction the road shoe is currently missing. Mm -hmm. We can also bevel the exterior perimeter edges of these lugs to make the shoe more forgiving over uneven terrain. Next is flex. We believe allowing the plate to articulate a little bit more will again allow it to be more forgiving on turns and uneven terrain. We plan to cut the plate in the forefoot in the heel to toe direction in order to allow this type of articulation. Okay, and finally fit. The minimal nature of the Carbon X upper doesn't offer much protection in the trail environment, and we felt the forefoot could benefit from some additional lockdown and support. We plan to add a layer of Dyneema laminated with foam in the lateral forefoot eye stay. We also coated the tip with a liquid rubber to offer a little more protection without adding much weight. Here's a sketch of these proposed changes. Let's get hacking. Now we've done the hack and the shoes are ready to go. Even with adding some support pieces, we still took off three quarters of an ounce. Wow, this will be a very interesting to see what the rabbit thinks. Let's go. Yeah, that's good. Now it's definitely up there with the grippiest trail shoes I've had, especially coming downhill. It really was biting into the trail, which is great. 
Sweet. It's still fast. I think that was kind of one of the questions. Do you feel any difference between a uh, road version and the uh, trail version? From like a speed standpoint, I don't really think you're compromising anything. Fit is a little bit better, a little bit more locked down. Grip is substantially different. If you're trying to go fast in the trail, this is a great cool. option for that. So the rabbit has run the shoe. Mm -hmm. And what did you hear, Dave? Well, the rabbit clearly stated that the traction was a major improvement over the stock shoe. That isn't surprising given the road shoe has no lugs at all. What is surprising is the rabbit commented it may be the best traction they've experienced in a trail shoe. Our testing was just one night though, so we take that with a large uh, dose of salt. However, interesting to hear such positive feedback on the traction. The rabbit noted the four foot lockdown as well, and he also mentioned being able to corner hard in the speed hack shoe. We think the combination of beveled edges and the articulated plate allowed this shoe to move pretty well on the trail. We're gonna try something new on speed hack today. We're interested to find out if we have changed the cushioning property of the Hoka Carbon X. We removed quite a bit of material from the bottom. And typically when you remove foam, you may also take away cushioning with it. So it's important for us to understand exactly what's happening. That's right. In order to accomplish this, we uh, have given the shoes to our friends in the biomechanics lab and they're gonna get back to us with the results. So we got some interesting results on the in-shoe pressures. It turns out that removing the material that we did did not significantly change the cushioning of the shoe. So although there's a lot less midsole, the plate we think moderates pressures enough to mean that it's still safe and good to run it. That's great to hear. Well, that was a lot of fun, converting a road rocket into a trail scorcher. Mission accomplished. Come back soon to see our next speed hack.